What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and just a forewarning, if you are somebody who isn't great with criticism of a team you like, or isn't great with somebody ranting about something, this video is probably not for you, so yeah, as much as I do want to grow my channel and get people to watch my videos more, this is going to be basically a rant because I'm frustrated, and frankly, I, I almost considered not doing a review of this game, but... I need to get my frustration out. I want to talk about why this game is so bad. And yeah, what better place to do it than YouTube, right? So before I go into rage rant state, I do want to say there are a few players tonight that I, I probably won't talk about during the rant because frankly, they didn't do anything to piss me off. Um, three of them you should already know because two of them I've been practically praising since game three or four. Uh, Obviously, Jeff Laurentowitz and Michael Parkhurst. I mean, both of them gave 100%. Uh, Michael, unfortunate on the goal. I mean, just he saw it barely before it hit him and went in. So he just there's nothing he could have done there. But he, they both put as much as they could into it. They both put in a lot of good challenges to keep them from countering. A lot of times it was just those two plus maybe you know Walks or Perez sometime. But they were the only two that I saw consistently working hard throughout the game, so they're immune from my criticism. Uh, Guzan obviously hasn't put a step wrong since he came in, so no surprise he's immune. And then the other one's Yamil Assad. I mean, just not really... Of all those four, or of these four that I'm not going to criticize, he's probably the, the least of those four, basically because he does make a lot of mistakes on the ball. He does give it away sometimes, but... The work that he puts in is enough for me to say, you know what, I, I can appreciate the hard work. You know, the willingness to go back and defend and win the ball back, I, I can appreciate that. So even though he does make mistakes, even though he does give the ball away, and sometimes he does dribble a little too much, I appreciate the hard defensive work. So with that being said, time to flip the switch and go into ramp mode, so... So let's talk about this game, because, seriously, the worst team in the league have beaten us three freaking times. They have three wins against us. That's about half their win record. That's ridiculous. And the thing is, it's not some voodoo curse. It's not like, oh, DC United, that's just the team Atlanta can't beat. That's not it. For whatever reason, there have been four or five games where there's just been a lack of of effort and interest on the field. And three of those four or five games have been against DC United. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about playing against them, but something about it, maybe it's the fact that they sit in and it frustrates our front players so much that they just decide, you know what, I don't want to play tonight. But it's a lack of effort. That's all it is. It's nothing that DC United does. It's nothing that the teams that have beaten us whenever we don't try it is. You know, there have been a few games where we've just been beaten by a better team. The three games where we faced DC United have not been it. It's been a lack of effort. It's been us beating ourselves. First time we went to DC, we gave them the goals. Tonight, we put in a few good chances, and then it just got too tough, and some of the players just said, I'm done. And then it just DC, 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 all the way down the field. And nobody's tracking back. Nobody's putting in good defensive work, aside from the, the few that I talked about. And that's ridiculous. For, for a club that talks about passion, for a club that talks about, oh, we, we have a desire, you know, we're with you guys, we're with the fans. I'm not with that. I'm not with that not trying crap. That's bull crap. And I'm sick of having to see that. So, let's talk about it. Because, first one I want to get into, not necessarily a lack of effort, but there are a few players that I'm just sick of seeing the same mistakes, game after game after game, and there's no improvement. At some point, you have to say, okay, this isn't working and change. Perez, I'm done with all of his stupid long balls that go to absolutely nobody. I can't even tell you how many times he just, we, we've got possession back, we finally got it back, kicks it to the wrong team, and guess what? They're back at us again. If there's any reason why we're having to defend for 20 minutes at a time, it's because Perez keeps getting the ball and keeps giving it away, giving it away. And then defensively, he's still going into stupid challenges. He's still flying into a challenge when he should just be standing the guy up. And he either fouls him or he's beat. Frustrating. And I, th there's no change. There's nothing changing there. It's the same thing 
game in, game out. And it, it's stupid. At some point, you just you have to look at it and say, all right, Perez, time to change. Time to fix this because we can't keep having this mistake from one of our two defenders in the center. Garza and Walks are two of the ones out of, or pretty much the only two out of the rest of the players that I'm not super pissed with, but I'm still frustrated. Garza, he does too much on the ball. You know, he's a defender. He should not be trying to do heel back heels. He should not be trying to dribble people. He doesn't have that kind of pace. And it, whenever he does, he's pulled out of position. Most of the time he loses it, and now we're in trouble. So he still puts in a, some good defensive effort. I do see that. But it's the fact that he's the one causing it. He's the one that's causing the fact that he's having to work hard defensively that's frustrating. So it's not entirely, it's not like he lazed around this entire game like some of the other players did. He actually did put in some effort. It just wasn't, it wasn't good effort. It was, you know, he's trying to run this guy who's clearly two or three times faster than he is. You should know better. You should be smarter than that. And so he did cause a lot of our defensive issues. Walks is just, I don't know, he has moments where he turns on, he has moments where he turns off. Uh, the goal in particular, I mean, he, he's not aware of the guy back behind him. You know, Vialba probably should be stepping in on him, but you should know he's back there and say, hey, Tito, let's get back and defend, instead of just, oh, crap, there's a guy there, and it's too late at that point. So he just, like I said, he has moments. He does have some good moments here and there. But when you balance that out with some of the mistakes he makes, with some of the times that he turns off and he's unaware of what's going on around him, it kind of balances out to just like, eh, why are you even out there? Then we get into the midfield, and one of the players that, in my opinion, should just be off the team entirely, because I've already I've already expressed some frustration with him in the past, but the results have been going our way for the most part, so I've been like, okay, yeah, I'm frustrated with him, but you know what? I'll, I'll let it go for now. But tonight, Carmona? Carlos? No. It, probably the second worst player on the field. It's just absolutely awful. Giveaways. Stupid challenges. It just all all over the entire game. There's a mistake in the midfield. Most of the time, it's Carlos. And who's the one that's not getting back? Who's the one that's kind of jogging back instead of sprinting back to help out? It's Carlos. If you give away the ball, the very first thing in your mind should be either I'm going to win it back or I'm going to get back and help defend. But when you give it away, and I see you jogging back as we've got three or four players back to their five or six players, and you're one of the ones coming across nice and slow, I, I don't deal with that. I don't deal with that on the high school team that I help coach. I don't deal with players that just jog back, especially whenever we need to defend. So for me tonight, it wasn't just the mistakes. It was the lack of effort to get back from a defensive midfielder that pisses me off. And in my opinion, I mean, obviously he's not playing next game because he got a fifth yellow, so he's done for next game anyway. But I think if whoever comes in holds down the midfield well, it's probably going to be Kevin, I hope. If he comes in and holds down the midfield well enough, I say keep him in. Because we, we don't need that. We don't need a player that's going to jog back defensively. We need a player who's going to work their butt off and just not care. Not care if they're getting tired, not care if they're putting themselves under a lot of stress. It should just be you get back. You, that should be the first thing in your mind. Just get back, defend, defend, defend. Especially when you're the one to give it away. So, extremely pissed off with Carlos tonight. Just, in my opinion, like I said, second worst player on the field. You get up to the, the front four. I already talked about Yamil a little bit. Miguel, worst game of his career. It has to be. I mean, I don't know how... Obviously, I never saw him before he came to Atlanta. It's got to be the worst game of his career. I mean... Just nothing, nothing worked for him tonight. And part of that was some of the times the help wasn't there. Sometimes people weren't moving for him. But I can't tell you how many times Martinez made a run and he's not looking for it. He's not aware of it. He doesn't try it, if he, even if he does see it. And honestly, if I'm gonna, it's really hard for me to talk about Miguel, Tito, and Joseph by themselves. It's really hard for me to discuss those three individually because in all reality... If one of them was doing something right, the other two were doing something wrong. A couple examples. One in particular, like I said, there's a moment Miguel's making a run across the field with the ball. Joseph's made a great run in behind. He's starting it. He's aware of it. Lay him in. 
You know that's what he good he's good at. Lay him in. But Miguel just keeps dribbling, keeps dribbling, takes three or four more touches, and then just gives it out to Greg. And just at that point, it it's done. You know, there's no the the intensity, the urgency at that point is done because now we just slot it outside. We're gonna take a few more touches, probably send a cross into nobody. So why not slip him in? Another example, Miguel's just won the ball back. This is the first half. Probably one of the best chances we had. Obviously, the best one was Miguel's just this side of the post. Miguel's just won it back. Tito picks it up. He's got Joseph making a run inside. He's got Miguel making a run on the outside. It's 3v1. What does he do? Dribble, 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 dribble. Okay, now we're too close. Now you try to lay it off, but the defender's already read it. He pokes it back out, and Tito just has a shot right to the keeper. Why? Why? You've got uh, two players, the, probably some of the fastest players in the MLS, if not the fastest players in the MLS. They're both ready to make a run, slip them in behind. But no. And then you lose it. And that's what's frustrating. Joseph had moments where he's making great runs, but then there's some moments where we need him to do anything. We need him to pop into space. We need him to make a run to draw a defender. And he's standing. Do something. It's so funny. I saw. I was watching on Fox Sports Southeast, and of course we got Alan Green and Dan Gargan. God. But anyway, they're they're talking about stuff. They're talking about stuff, and then it pops up keys for Atlanta to get themselves back into the game after it was already down one nothing. One was find the width, and then the other one was get Martinez or get the ball to Martinez or something like that. Get Martinez involved, I think. And all I could think was, how about Martinez gets himself involved? You know, obviously he's making some good runs every now and then, but just because those those don't work doesn't mean you shut off completely. You have to help. You have to do something. Standing in the middle doesn't help. Standing off sides doesn't help. You make runs. You keep changing your run. You keep moving. You don't just stand because you're frustrated because you're not getting the ball. That's what a child does. And honestly, that's probably the best thing to describe those three tonight. They're all playing like children. You've got Miguel, who's the, the child that gets so frustrated that he just tries to take everything on himself. you got Tito that thinks he's the child that he's just, I'm, I'm so much better than everybody else, so I'm going to take it by myself. And then you've got Martinez, who's the child that's just like, oh, they're not giving me the ball, I'm just going to stand here and do nothing. I mean, they're all acting like children, and that's frustrating. I mean, it's just, it is just one game. I, I get that. It's just one game, one loss isn't the end of the world. But we've got so many games at hand. We've got so many games at hand. And we've got a chance to make a push for the top three. And they just said, not tonight. And as a professional, there's no reason for that. There's no reason you're being paid a good amount of money to go out there and work your butt off to try to win a game because you want to end up in playoffs at the end of the year. You want to push to be one of the best teams at the end of the year. We are one of the best teams in this league. We've got the talent. We It's there. We've beaten a lot of teams. We've shown that we are better than a lot of teams. But then we faced the worst team in the league, and for some reason, all three of the games, it should have been easy. The first ten minutes, it looked like it was going to be easy. We're slipping people in. We're moving the ball around. We get a few good shots off. And then just all of a sudden... It's too hard. It's slower now. Now we're moving the ball around. We're going back to our defense. And then back up. Oh, no, there's too many people back. Back to our defense. And then back up. And it's just, it's so slow. There's a lack of effort. There's a lack of interest. At some point, you just got to say, you know what? Let's, let's just, who cares that there's 10 people in the box? Who cares? Let's just do something about it. Let's just move the ball around. Let's try something. Instead of just saying, eh, it's too hard tonight. Eh, who cares? It's just, eh. So, like I said, I needed to rant about this because that's frustrating. As a fan who loves to support this team, who loves the fact that we got a good team in this year, that we've got a team that can compete for higher honors, I love that. I love having a team like that. But... You give me a game like that, you give me three games like that against the worst team in the league, 
that's inexcusable. And there's just, there's no reason for it. There's no excuse for it. There's nothing you could say, oh, well, you know, oh, there's this reason, and oh, the refs were bad, and oh, the field was bad. There's, no, there's no reason. They're the worst team in the league. You go out there, you dominate the game, and you put them away. You score early, you put them away. You make it 3 nothing in the first half, you put them away. But no, no, we, we tried the first 15 minutes, it didn't happen, and they started sitting in more, and now it's just too hard, and I don't want to play like this, and uh, I don't want to have to battle, and uh, it's just too hard. Uh, there's like five people in there, and who cares, I'm just going to pass it back after taking ten touches. I, that That's pretty much all I saw tonight, so... That's about all for me. Um, I guess, well, I, I probably should talk about the subs real fast because Tata decided to make a few changes, some of which I don't understand. My first thought when we were talk, getting to the topic of subs is the play is way too slow. We need energy on the field. Peterson. That's my first thought. Peterson or Kevin. Both of them provide a lot of energy. Both of them just move and move and move. Maybe that alone would be enough to spark something. So who do we go to? Julian. The slowest player on our team. Genius! Yeah, we're, we're already playing slow. Let's get a guy who is just as slow as the play. Because that'll help. Um, decided to take off Anton at that point and you know, go in more attacking, I guess. Didn't really work out. Didn't really hurt us either. But, yeah, just... We needed somebody to change the play, and so you bring on Julian. That doesn't change anything. Second sub, Brandon comes on for Tito. Uh, of the three subs, probably the only one that really looked like he was going to do something. You know, just he did work, uh, but he's still pretty naive, and you know he's still a kid, so you can't really fault him for that. But honestly, he just he comes on and he works hard, and all of a sudden. He looks like one of the better players on the pitch because he's actually working. Yes, he takes a few bad touches. Yes, he fouls a couple people silly, but who cares? I see him working. That's enough for me. Unfortunately, at that point, it was a little too late to do anything. Um, and then the last one was Chris McCann, and he just he doesn't change anything either. Uh, so I don't really know what the thinking was there, but that's it for the three subs. And that's it. about it for the game overall. Um Finally got to release sort of my inner aggression, which is always nice to do. But yeah, I mean, obviously we've got another away game against Philadelphia on Saturday. Um, it's another team that's not performing very well this year. It's another lower team in the league. We've got to show that this <laughs> this isn't uh, this isn't something that's going to happen a lot. This isn't a game that's going to continue to pro progress. And just, oh, look, another eh game. Another, I'm not really going to give my all today game. Because um, I, I don't think I could stand much more of that. You know, we go to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I don't think I could go to a stadium like that. And with the fans that we've got, I don't think I could stand to s just watch a game like that one we just saw. So, let's hope Tata changes something. Let's hope he gets into their ear. And just, I guess, wakes them up. Because <laughs> this this should have been a wake-up call. This should have been a moment for us to say, hey, those two games we lost against them, just a fluke. Let's get revenge. And so to see the lack of effort tonight makes it all the more disappointing. So that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Who was the worst player out there tonight? Let me know. We can talk about it and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Atlanta United reviews. See you guys in the next one.